My name is Zachary Ferguson Baird. It's a way of storytelling that has rules built into it so that people with different ideas, different opinions, different strengths of ideas and opinions can tell a story that's cohesive and there's a, a framework to help it grow and blossom but also be kept in check. I like that D&D has that open atmosphere that people can come and have very different experiences. Yeah, you just get to be with people and I like people. That's kind of the reason I do this. I want to be with people. I want to hear their stories and I want to be in community with them beyond just like some games. Growing up, I loved it for the the strategy and the almost more like a like a, a war game almost, but it's totally possible to play it where you your intention is not to play it like a war game and it, it is to find pacifist solution to something and negotiate like a peace treaty between warring nations. I am mostly a DM, yeah. I've done a player character a couple times, but within most of my life I did DMing the Saga Edition game for like eight years, I think. And lately I've switched into more D&D, more fantasy age. Like you're, you're planning a story or planning a world and you're just kind of dreaming. And in that dreaming, you put little key points and hope that your players will step through them or do it in a way where no matter what your players do, they're gonna step through some of those variables. As they're creating character or maybe through significant story events, put together these little cards that I can hand out that are kind of more like a personal goal for their character, um, as long as they approve it, because it's their character, their thing. Um, but if I'm feeling or sensing the story going in a certain way, then giving them uh, a card just to help keep that motivation in their mind across sessions. When I'm DMing, I like to have props. I like to make it more sensory. Like I like to have music on in the background or have changed the lighting to make it uh, feel more like you're in the scenario or, you know, bring out the occasional costume or different things. Uh, it just makes it feel, well, feel more like theater in one sense, but just more engaging to all your senses. So if I can write a scroll <laughs> and hand it to my players and they get to like read through it and decipher it themselves and maybe there's the puzzle is actually a puzzle for them and not just a dice roll they have to roll. I think that's awesome. I think it adds to storytelling. Does every DM need to do this? No, absolutely not. You can totally do theater of the mind. You can totally get away with graph paper and it's amazing. Uh, it's awesome. But if you want to like build your creativity, sometimes there'll be a piece that I just have some old foam, this old styrofoam, or I find a piece of an old toilet or something. I'm like, I know what this could be. And you just get really inspired and it will add a whole element to your storytelling because now you're thinking outside your mind. Uh, you're thinking with what's around you. Is it niche? Maybe. Does it have to be? No. Do you need to? Absolutely not. Can you? Would it be fun? Would it advance your story? Probably. Uh, but that's up to you. We've got a 3D printer here. Uh, this is a new addition and we've been 3D printing all sorts of stuff. It makes it easy and cheap to print a ton of whatever you need. So a whole goblin horde or uh, some bugbears, which is pretty fun. It took like 32 hours to print this. It was just when I was learning what to do and it's not quite cleaned up, but a miniature like this would cost probably 20 bucks, maybe more. And uh, I printed it for a couple, like a dollar. Right now, the D&D that I'm playing is online with a friend uh, and some other friends from Winnipeg and uh, Yellowknife, actually. Whenever you are doing an action, you roll a die, and it essentially adds a probability to what, like, is going to happen. No matter what level you are, there's always this, if you roll a 1, it's unfortunate consequences. And if you roll a 20, it's very fortunate consequences. At the last moment, the players decided to like jump from the ship as it was collapsing. And uh, the way that the dice turned out, the way that the rolls turned out is that some people were back flipping out gracefully, like avoiding the trees um, as they collided at a million miles per hour into the ground and other people uh, were impaled on the trees as they fell out. I don't collect dice as much as like the next person, but I do have a couple sets that I really like. So I've got like this charcoal gray set that I just, I like. I've got a like white and black set that I really like. And I have a big heavy metal die I use for special occasions. I knew the rule books 
in and out when I was younger. And now I think I know them less, but I have more fun. Uh, it's a common held piece of advice, but when you're getting in, like learn the rules, read the rule book and stuff, but don't hold it hard and fast. Like the, the point of the game is to have fun. The point of the game is to get to know people. It's, it's a way to storytell. It's a, it's a way to have a group of people's emotions moved in a way and, and learn things and communicate things and, and genuinely have an awesome time.